I never went to a school that re required uniforms, but I can still remember that I had to write a research paper in high school about the schools that did require them. I think it was a persuasive essay where we didn't pick the topic, but we had to make a claim and do the research for something that was assigned to us, and that was the topic I was given. And I'm not sure how the research has changed over 30 years, but back then it was pretty clear. In the schools where kids wore uniforms, they had fewer issues with discipline, fewer peer-to-peer -peer pressures that showed up. And I can see how that would make sense. We can probably all remember the clothing trends of our day. When I was a teenager, it was guest jeans and hyper-color t-shirts. I didn't have either of those. And the pressures of feeling left out, as shallow as that might sound to a day to admit that, they were real. When there's uniformity, you don't have some of the issues of kids feeling like trends set the tone for who they are or who they are not. However, just because we have uniformity in things like clothes, that does not guarantee that we have unity. Think about it this way. When a football team puts on their uniforms, they all match. Their uniforms help us to know which team we're even cheering for from the sidelines. But just because the players wear the same uniforms, it doesn't mean they'll all play the same way. It doesn't mean they'll all get along with their teammates or do their part to maintain unity on the team. We're all unique, complicated, messy human beings. So unity, it takes a different kind of work. In the book of Romans, Paul is writing a letter to a community that's got two groups of people, the Jews and the Gentiles who may live in the same place and who are both curious about following the ways of Jesus, but who approach life very differently. In this letter, Paul is offering wisdom to help them figure out how to live together. In chapter 12, we read, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. He goes on to explain that there are great things that can come from a community of believers who are different that just like the body, which has arms and legs that function for co totally different purposes, but work together, each of us with our own uniquenesses, quirks and all, can do the same. In fact, our different gifts coming together can make for a great community. In verses 15 and 16, we read more about the ways a community can live together and support one another. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn and live in harmony with one another. I read something the other day that wondered uh, for us to imagine a song that was only one note, just a single note through an entire song. It would be terrible, wouldn't it? It would never make it on the billboard charts. I would venture to guess that even if you are monotone, you wouldn't wanna to listen to that song while you sing at the top of your lungs in your car. Harmony, even a little bit, can go a long way to tie things together. There can be unity even amidst our differences. So this year, whether your school requires uniforms or not, consider the places where you could seek unity over uniformity. How could you help your kids seek, it, seek that same thing? Differences can be celebrated, and just as Paul advised the Roman people, we might be truly transformed by those differences too. <laughs>